Since the 1950s, a total of 62 tornadoes worldwide have reached F5 intensity, with 59 of them being in the United States alone. Two states in particular hold the record for most F5 tornadoes, Alabama and Oklahoma, with a total of 14 combined. Back in May of 2013, only 11 days before the record-breaking El Reno tornado, Oklahoma faced a threat that ended up being far more destructive than anyone could have imagined. This is the story of the 2013 Moore, Oklahoma tornado, the last confirmed EF5 tornado to occur on our planet. Situated between Oklahoma City and Norman, Oklahoma, Moore is the seventh largest city in the Sooner State. It's also no stranger to devastating tornadoes. The OKC metro area, which includes Moore, is on the southeastern border of Tornado Alley, a loosely drawn area of the central U.S. where tornadoes are all too common. While the lines aren't clearly defined, Tornado Alley stretches from northern Texas to the border of North and South Dakota. It encompasses nearly all of Nebraska and Kansas, stretching into eastern Colorado and kissing the Nebraska-Iowa line. On Monday, May 20th of 2013, just as children were getting ready to leave school, a powerful EF5 tornado touched down in Moore, Oklahoma, with winds peaking at 210 miles per hour. According to the National Weather Service, the Mile Wide Twister was one of 15 storms that touched down that day, but the only one to toy with F5 intensity. It dipped between F3 and F5 as it roamed 17 miles through the heavily populated areas of Moore. Schools, hospitals, homes, cars, businesses, nothing remained standing that stood in the Twister's path. The storm ripped the bark from trees and scoured miles of ground for 39 terrifying minutes before dispersing into the sky. It left almost $2 billion worth of damage in its wake and claimed over 20 lives. The fixings of a devastating tornado arrived in town early in the morning. By mid-afternoon, the Storm Prediction Center, or the SPC, issued severe thunderstorm warnings from north-central Texas up to southeastern Missouri. They expected hailstorms and smaller tornadoes, but gambled on the possibility of intense storms. The SPC issued its first tornado watch around 1 p.m., prompting many parents to pick their kids up from school early, and it is a good thing they did. The SPC underestimated the threat, saying there was only a 20% chance of one or more twisters reaching between F2 and F5 intensity. About an hour after the SPC issued their underwhelming tornado watch, a severe thunderstorm encompassed Grady County, about 36 miles southwest of Moore. Almost every news network in the area switched to covering the encroaching storm. The tornado officially touched down at 2.56 p.m., about 11 miles west of Moore in northwestern McLean County. Dashcam footage from Newcastle Police Chief Gary Norman shows the storm's early stages, beginning as a narrow, cone-shaped twister and dealing F1 intensity damage to nearby homes and trees. Although, it doesn't take long before the tornado intensifies, dealing EF4 intensity damage to several homes en route to Moore. A few minutes after touching down, the National Weather Service updated their warning to a full-fledged emergency for southern OKC and more. Radar detected a mile-wide debris signature as the storm moved into southern OKC. The storm maintained EF3 intensity as it crossed the Canadian River, leading into Cleveland County. Then, the cyclone followed 149th Street as it inched closer to southern OKC and more, multiplying in width with every rotation. It leveled several homes with EF4 intensity damage as it set sights on a new target, a traffic jam forming on South Santa Fe Avenue. Desperate parents raced to Briarwood Elementary School and Plaza Towers Elementary to pick up their kids early but the influx of cars and escaping residents resulted in miles of bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, and the tornado was fast approaching. 
Chief Meteorologist Gary England saw footage of the backup, hopped on the radio, and urged drivers to detour down side streets to avoid the storm and clear the traffic jam. They were sitting ducks, and England may have easily saved hundreds of lives that day. The storm moved through several rural areas along 149th Street, leaving nothing behind but concrete slabs and splintered wood. At one point, it picked up and blew away four oil tanks. One was found a mile away. It ripped through a family farm and the Celestial Acres horse training facility, where it killed and maimed about a hundred horses. Those horses that survived were left with severe injuries. The storm continued on its eastbound track, hell-bent on crashing into Briarwood Elementary School. The students and teachers who couldn't make it out hid wherever they could. But thanks to the school's more modern infrastructure, nobody died when the storm roared overhead. Unfortunately, Plaza Towers Elementary suffered a far worse fate. The storm ripped through Central Moor, causing EF4 and EF5 intensity damage to entire neighborhoods, tearing the anchored homes clean from their foundations. Then it reached Plaza Towers, and all hell officially broke loose. Teachers and students were trapped inside the more traditionally built elementary school, with a long line of classrooms under one roof. But when the roof caved in, it made it impossible to crawl through any open space. Third grade teacher Jen Doan took shelter with her students in a hallway when the tornado hit, but the walls collapsed, trapping Jen and her students inside. The storm then turned towards Moore Medical Center, where at least a dozen cars piled up near the front entrance. The twister picked up one car and threw it on top of the hospital roof before doing EF4 damage to the medical center. Thankfully, the roughly 300 people inside made it to the designated safety areas. The twister moved on to level a bowling alley and a 7-Eleven with four people inside. Sadly, none of them made it out alive. Moving across Interstate 35, the storm only caused EF3 level damage to other businesses and vehicles before ramping up in intensity on the other side of the highway. It moved through more residential neighborhoods and erased a brick house on Hunter's Glen Court, leaving behind only a concrete slab foundation. As the storm left the more populated areas of Moore toward the east, it lessened to EF3 intensity. It destroyed a handful of industrial buildings and two more homes before it ultimately died out at 3.35 p.m., leaving a trail of death and destruction in its path. The twister destroyed an estimated 1,150 homes and caused about $2 billion in damage. In total, 377 people were injured and tragically, 24 lost their lives. 22 from the tornado, and two more indirectly. Oklahoma Governor Mary Fallin quickly got on the horn with President Obama, requesting federal aid to the state. The relief and rescue effort was all hands on deck, but when asked about building more storm shelters in schools, Governor Fallin brushed it off. At the time, only two of the 12 more public schools had storm shelters. Fallen opted not to sign a law requiring storm shelters in public schools, saying it would cost the state $2 billion. Ultimately, she left the decision of whether or not to build shelters up to local school districts. Five years after the Moore tornado, and dozens of schools across the state built safe rooms for their students. Still, those who lived through the Moore storm will never forget what they experienced that day. All the benefit concerts in the world can't shake the helplessness felt by trapped school children and adults alike. Many residents remember the Moore storm as a giant black wall of destruction. The 2013 Moore tornado was the last EF5 to occur in the world, making it quite a historic event and one those living in the area will never forget. To see another video just like this one, be sure to click the link on screen now. With that said, thank you all for watching, and be sure to tune in next time.